My name is Joy Agago, and um, I, some of us have known. I work with um, the overseas nurses to provide you eye out free tips for your academic test, especially for the health workers that want to come to the United Kingdom. We said it last week that when you join our class and they want to have your video on, please. Can Hannah Biodu, can you all turn on your videos, please? Good morning. Turn your videos on. If you come in and you can hear Good me, morning, ma. just type that um, you can hear me. You can give me like a wave or something. Just acknowledge that you can hear me and I'll be fine. Biodun, can you please turn your video on, please? There's really no need having a visual class when your video is off. Plus the fact that we keep these things for subsequent use and people may have to watch. Um, we need to be um, seen. We need to be visible, okay? All right. So today we are going to be dealing with the writing task and we will be talking about writing task two and depending on what time we've got, we will go over to writing task one, but I'm starting from writing task two. I know that many of us um, have got private chats of people saying um, to do writing task, writing task. Today we have it. We are going to be doing the writing tax. In the IELTS test generally, as health workers, especially as nurses, you are expected to write the academic test. And in the academic test, there are four modules. We have the reading, the writing, the speaking, and the listening test. Now for the writing task, it's been divided into two, and um, in that two, we have the writing tax one and the writing tax two. All right, so writing tax two is what we're going to be talking about today. Generally, your writing tax two, writing tax are expected to write everything in one hour. Your task two is taking 40 minutes while you are expected to do task one in 20 minutes. Um, on a larger note, the writing task is taken from different topics, different, you know, areas, space of life. And um, we are expected to have at least 250 words, not more than, not less than 250 words. It can be more. I usually advise people, your writing should be between 250 to 290 words. This is because the more you write, the more errors you are going to have. So it is good for you to, as you practice, limit yourself as much as possible to a maximum of 290 words and a minimum of 250 words you need to use words that can express, you know, um, your point. I mean, sharp, sharp, as in say it as it is, and not going round and round, rigmaroling around the point when you've not made it. That way you are going to have too much to write. But if you pick your points and you develop them, like you give them what they want, at the end of the day, you will have the exact word or within the range of the words, the number of words that you are expected to write. Writing task two is designed to test your ability to write an academic essay style. And here you must present your information in your own words as complete sentences within paragraphs. Like I said, you are required to write 250 words and you have to complete the task in 40 minutes. Now, for your writing tasks, there are different types of questions that you will see. 
there are question types that you are expected to find in your writing task different types of questions and there are also different types of topics you know there are different topic types that you will find in your writing task too now for these topics i'm going to list them so you know what words to associate with them on the overall i would like that you have synonyms you have words you have phrases that are associated with these topics the topic types that you are going to find are education you find questions on education you find questions on crime you will find questions on the media you will find questions on technology you are going to have questions come to you from social issues like divorce like um, drug abuse like depression you know like alcohol abuse or the use of alcohol and you are going to have questions on the technology and the future probably then also on environment they can ask you questions about things that affect the environment and what you are expected to do whether you agree or disagree or whatever but you are likely to have questions come to you from your environment you are going to have just one of these question type in your exam and so i advise that since we can't say or we can't choose we can't know what particular topic type you will find your question from it's advisable that you select topics from these different spheres all right and make sure you are familiar with how to answer such questions familiarize yourself with these question types get synonyms that will help you for this these topics that i've listed this morning media crime education technology social issues technology and the future environment i like you to on your own get 10 synonyms each for them 10 synonyms for them for instance for crime you have 10 synonyms for education you have 10 synonyms for technology you have 10 synonyms for drug abuse for alcohol abuse for substance abuse generally you have 10 synonyms each how do you get these synonyms in my time i used google i used the internet a lot when i was practicing for my writing task for my ielts task I used my phone. I was left with just my phone and an iPad that dies on its own all the time. And with the condition of electricity in Nigeria, it was not easy for me to keep it powered. I depended more on my phone. I used my phone to search for things. I got apps on my phone that helped me with my practices. If you can, if you, um, you can download or buy Microsoft, um, the Microsoft Word is where you can type and it corrects your spellings microsoft word also help you make correct sentences in most um if you can afford them so you need some of these things to help you you know get used to how you are going to write your ielts test that way the moment you find the ielts test questions you are able to write your exams without stress and you will do it on time too now what are the types of questions you have talked about types of topics remember what i listed are topic types that you can find your questions from what are the types of questions that you can see in ielts some people will give you 11 types some will give you 12 some 10 some 9 it depends but for the purpose of this study i have grouped them all right i am following the authors as well that have grouped them into three different types of questions so number one of them is the opinion essays under the opinion essay is where you have the agree and disagree is what some people call argumentative essays is where you have to what extent do you agree or disagree all right is where you have sometimes they will ask you what how do you think the merits outweighs the demerits or do you think 
the advantages are more than the disadvantages. These are all opinion essays. They are looking or asking for your own view. All right. They are asking for your own view in this type of questions. And when they ask you for your view, there's a way to answer it than when they have not asked you for your view. So we have the opinion essay as number one. And number two, we have opinion essay on both sides. All right. Opinion essay or both sides and opinion. Just say both sides and opinion. Both sides and opinion. In this kind of question types, you are going to find questions that will be asking you to discuss both sides of the argument. All right. It will ask you to talk or discuss the advantages and the disadvantages, then what your own opinion is. It will ask you to discuss the advantages and the disadvantages and to give your opinion. Discuss both sides of the view. Discuss both sides of the argument. That is what this type of essay is going to um, help you or ask you to work with or to write the question type to write on, okay? When you have this type of questions, there is a way and a how to answer them, okay? Now, the third type of question that you will find in your writing task, in your academic writing task, is called the two-way, two-way, all right? Two-way essay, a two-way question type. Here, is asking you for maybe you can find a question like cause and effect. You can find a question like um, cause and solutions. You can find those kind of questions under two way essay. Okay, it's called a two question essay. Two question essay. Here you are asked to write both of them you have been asked for instance the cause and effect of smoking among the youths the cause and effect of smoking among the youths here you are expected to write about the cause on one side and the effect on the other side part of the problems that we have is the fact that people seem to juggle everything together at the end of the day there's no flow there's no coherence between your work having known what type of question we should expect i'm going to take us to what we call the markers what your examiners grade you on generally they are called indicators all right indicators you will have them for your writing task one and your writing task two you will use them in writing task one and two and then in your speaking as well this is what you are going to be graded on this is what you are going to be rated on this is what the examiner is going to score you for if she or she is able to find the elements of these things in your writing in your speaking that's what you are going to score your marks based on First of all, we have what we call the tax response or accomplishment or completion. Tax response, task accomplishment, task completion. Depending on which one you have come across, you know that this is a criteria that seems to access you on how well you have focused on the topic and how well you have answered it what is expected of you number one is the fact that you are expected to write over 250 words and then you are expected to satisfy all the requirements of the task how or what are the requirements of the task if you have been asked a both side and opinion essay this task completion is going to be asking or is going to be looking out for whether you have written one side and left the other side or whether you have written both sides of the view or whether you have written both sides of the view and given your opinion at the end of the day if it says that you should write both sides and opinion or both sides of the view and your own opinion then it's expected that you do three things you are expected to write on one side maybe decide that agree or disagree and then on the side 
that agree or disagree. I mean, if you have taken agree, then you also write the, on the part of disagreeing, and then you are going to tell me what your opinion is, whether you have agreed or you have disagreed. This kind of essays expect you to have a broad knowledge of what the topic is talking about. You have to know which one is which. You have to know the good side and the bad side. Then at the end of the day, you have to tell me what side you are on. It's just like a debate. When we were in secondary or primary school, where you choose, maybe they give you a debate and they say teachers are better than doctors or doctors are better than teachers. And you see that the side of the moderators, the, the, the people that have said this, they are on both sides. It's just your enablement or your ability to give them the points that they want, that is what you are going to be judged on. They don't care whether you say teachers are better or whether you say doctors are better. They just want you to like tell them why you said which side you have said why you have chosen to take part or to take the part that you have taken, why you have decided that teachers are better or why you have decided that doctors are better. At the end of the day of our debate in, in primary schools, you will usually have like a teacher, a mentor or someone come up when the debate is all done that yes, maybe the side of the teachers have won or the side of the doctors have won, but that we need both doctors and teachers for us to have what we call peaceful coexistence and usefulness in the society. You need the role of the teachers, you need the role of the doctors. Therefore, both sides are of great importance. Now, for you, when you have been asked both sides and opinion. You are expected to be on the side of the teacher, take it first, finish it, go to the side of the um, doctor, take it and finish it. Then in your opinion is where you are going to tell me exactly what side you belong. Okay, so those kind of questions, if you have that in my task response as a tutor or as an examiner, I'm going to be looking out for how well you have satisfied this requirement. I'm going to look out for how well you have covered the topic. And I'm going to look out for, you know, uh, if you were able to develop the main points that you gave me, did you give me an example? Did you like cite your, your, your points and you just put a full stop there and there's no further explanation of what it is? That's what I'm going to be looking out for in your task response, task completion, task accomplishment. Then there's what we call the coherence and cohesion. Coherence and cohesion accesses how well you have structured your essay, how well you have used your paragraphs, and then the connection between your ideas. I'm going to be looking out for a sequence of information and your ideas, how logical you have been able to put your information down, how, how um, coherent, I mean, the flow between your work. For instance, they have asked you teachers and doctors, did you say one point about teacher and then join to the point about doctors and there is this wobbling, this kind of a mix up. You didn't, did, you, did you do it sequentially? They said, what side? So did you take a side and finish it, then move to the next side or you were just jumping in between the points? That's what I'm going to be looking out for when I'm after your coherence and your cohesion. Also, your, uh, uh, your paragraphing. How is your paragraphing? All right, remember that there are sentences that make up the paragraph. Is your paragraphing too short or is it too long? Did you connect them well? How much of these cohesive devices have you used to connect your work to make it meaningful? Can I just read your work and know without asking you questions that you do understand the question? Can I just read your work and shake my head and be happy that you have done a good job? The neatness between the flow, the documentation of your information that you're giving me, how do they flow? Do you repeat information? You need to avoid unnecessary repetition of information. All right. Is there a clear progression? Are you moving from point A to point B to point C to point D? Or you are just there, you, are, you have given an introduction and then you have brought your conclusion before your points? 
That's what I'm going to be looking out for if I am your examiner when I'm accessing your coherence and cohesion. Now, there's another one that we call lexical resource. The lexical resource has to do with your vocabularies, all right? Your vocabularies in terms of errors and your ability to use more advanced language. How are you going to use this? You use vocabularies that allow some flexibility and precision in between them. You use less common vocabularies. That's why I had asked you, even before the class properly started, that you need to get vocabularies for this kind of question type so that when you find them in your exam, having practiced enough, you will have them flowing. All right. We all know that when we are exposed to information, maybe by reading or hearing or whatever uh, mode, there are pathways that are created for those information in the brain. And so if you have been able to create these pathways in the course of your practice, in the course of your learning, in the course of your rehearsal, for this writing task, when you get to the exam hall and you have found a question on education, you know what vocabularies can be used when you're writing a topic on education. And so you can flow well, so you can be fast as well. You know, when you know what to write, it gives you speed. And you really need speed because writing 250 words from your own ideas under 40 minutes in a structured manner is not an easy task. But if some of us were able to do it, then you can do it. Now is the academic IELTS test that we're writing. For me, I wrote the UKVI, which was said to be really hard. And... God helping me, I didn't have to write it twice. I wrote it once. Now you have these free um, classes coming to you over and over. You can go and watch and all of that. I had um, less than four hours of tutorials with a tutor that I had paid and then and all of that and came and I was not really able to learn, but because I was determined. So if it's something that you're determined to do, you will be able to do it because others are doing it. All right. So if you keep practicing like I did, keep practicing under duress, keep practicing timing yourself as much as possible, you will get there. So when you write again, or for those of us that have tried once, twice, and are finding it difficult, if you have been able to practice with all of these, all of these tips, you will be able to, you know, like make it this time around. All right. So for your lexical resource, I will advise you to use less common vocabularies. The vocabularies that you are going to be looking for in this one, the assignment that I have given you. Look for vocabularies that are not commonly used and use them in the context that you are asked. Don't just go and use vocabularies that are not in line. If you do that, you lose marks. All right. You also have to avoid errors with the choice of your words. Like I said, choose what words can fit in at this time. Don't go and use words that, yes, they are the same, but they cannot be used at this time or in that context. All right. Error in your word formation, your choice of words, your word formation and in your spellings. In your spellings, for your writing, your listening and your um, writing listening and your reading your spelling is very very important if you spell a word wrongly whatever way you will get it wrong because they won't mark you correct in as much as ielts is not a negative marking kind of exam they are not going to help you to correct your spellings and if your spelling is not correct then it means that option is not correct especially for your reading and your speak um, listening you need to be very careful and in your writing if you do have spelling errors they will circle them and you lose marks for spelling errors so you avoid spelling errors as much as possible i had given out an assignment and somebody had written writing as in w r i t t i n g that's what she wrote but you and i know or if you don't know you know it now that writing is w r i T I N G. Those are the kind of spellings that we can mix, we can mix up. Biting, hitting. We tend to like make one um, alphabet 
double where it should be it, it should be single and we sometimes make them single where it should be double so you need to be careful with this alphabet with what comes before what like receive deceive some people will write deceive and put the i before the e and some will put the e after the C before the I. So you need to know the right spelling. And that's why I had encouraged you earlier to make use of Microsoft Word because it's going to correct spellings for you. There are some spellings you don't even know and then it will give you the right one. Secondly, when you use these devices like Microsoft Word to do your practice, you'll find out that um, you write some words, you like write like a phrase and then it makes it underlines it and gives you something else that can come in there to make it shorter or to make it clearer or to make it more understandable so if you can have access to these devices it will go a long way number four among the things that we are <clears throat> accessing you on that is the grading of your tax is what we call grammatical range and accuracies I don't mean no harm, but coming from where we are coming from in Africa and especially in Nigeria, we tend to speak a lot of wrong English. We make so much grammatical errors in our speaking, in our writing. There's a particular set of people in Nigeria who are known to be very educated, but have issues with speaking what they know. I don't want to mention that. It's everywhere, it's common. Some people take correction and some don't. But for the purpose of IELTS, even if you're among those that don't take that correction, please start taking the correction now. Like generally, what we call in quote, you speak wrong English, you shoot arrow and all of that. If you do that in your writing test, it's going to cost you a lot of marks. Some people that fail the writing test is not because they have not been able to write their test or complete the task. Some is because of those small, small errors, spelling errors, grammar errors. If you write a sentence and it's not grammatically correct, then you're wrong. Take note of that in your speaking, in your reading, in your listening, and in your writing. So everywhere you need your grammatical range and accuracy. This accesses you in terms of errors and it, it assesses your ability to use more advanced sentence structures. It has to do with your sentence formation. Remember in primary and secondary school where we were taught about um, types of sentences, where we have the simple sentence, the compound sentence, and the complex sentences. For the purpose of IELTS writing, I will advise you to, as much as possible, use more of the simple and the sentence as complex sentences mixed together. Run away from the compound sentences because it does not give you that flow, it does not give you that outcome that you are on the lookout for. Avoid errors with your punctuations as well. Where you are supposed to have a comma, are you putting a full stop? Where you are supposed to have a question mark, are you putting a comma or something? Use a mix of simple and complex sentences, all right? Produce error-free sentences and take note of your grammar and your punctuations. Okay? Are we getting me? Biodu, can you please put on your video, please? If you are in this class, we said it in our last class that you need to have your video on. Um, Tolu, please put on your video as well. Thank you very much. Okay, someone had asked a question. Let's see. Oh, good morning. Good morning to you, Deborah. Um, thank you for joining us. If you put on your video, there's no, really, there's no need really coming for a visual class when you can't have your videos on. I do understand that some of us think or we may believe that the videos um, take more money or more data and all of that, but if you are looking for something, you need to pay the price at all costs so you can have what you want. Having discussed the criteria for which you are going to be um, judged or you are going to be graded, you are going to be rated, 
we will move over to the structure of the IELTS writing tax too. The structure of the writing tax too. As your examiner, um, before then, I really never knew what it was, even though I wrote the exam and God helped me to pass. I studied, yes, but I got a better understanding after I attended um, two Cambridge um, online um, lectures for teaching IELTS and for teach one is for teaching IELTS and the other is for teaching online. I discovered that for IELTS, you have, you know, from various books, from various people trying to put things down for us to, you know, pass these exams. Many of them have um, written different kind of different types of views. So um, there's a bit of confusion. But if you look at it very well, at the end of the day, everything falls in line to make you have um, your mark if you are able to follow the structures. The writing task structure has four paragraphs four paragraphs writing tax two has four paragraphs writing tax three should have three paragraphs now for your writing tax two we have your introduction your first body paragraph your second body paragraph and your conclusion your introduction is what your topic has said how do you get your introduction a rephrase of your question, all right, a paraphrase of your question, excuse me, and your specific statement. A paraphrase of your question and your specific statement. Your specific statement for your opinion essay is your stand, has to do with your state, your position for your opinion essays. Your specific statement for both sides and opinion has to do with the task that you have been given to do. Your specific statement for two question essay has to do with the task that you have been given. We will deal with them one after the other. For your introduction, you rephrase the question and you state your opinion for opinion essay. That will give me your introduction. It's as simple as that. There's no need for you to go and be defining what those things are. There's really no need for you to go and be giving me a background study of what the question is asking you. Just give me, rephrase your question prompt for me and state your view. Give me your stand. Let me know what your view is. What are you going to be doing? What am I expecting from you? What should I know? What should I be expecting? What angle should I direct my search light to when I see your introduction? That's what your introduction should tell me. Your introduction should direct me to a point telling me what to look for in your essay. All right. If you get on your writing part, sorry, in my class, it's more of practicals because I like that we get feedback. So if you get on your writing pad, if I have said we are going to do an introduction, you will type it and post it for all of us to see and for corrections to be made. Because if I say you should bring everything to my inbox, I may not have all the time to do that at the right time for you. So in, in order for us to manage, you know, um, our learning and to get feedback so that if it's one thing we have learned today, we know we got it correctly. That's the way I teach. We are going to be doing some class works in between. So just get ready. All right. Now, rephrasing your question. How do you rephrase your question? You get your key points. What are your key points in a statement? The words. All right. You underline them or you circle them or you pick them out. And you get the synonyms. You get a, a paraphrase for me of the entire sentence or statement that was made. Then your stand, your stand. So your general statement and your specific statement. Your general statement is a rephrase, a paraphrase of the question prompt. Your specific statement 
is your assignment, your job, your task with that question. Okay? So this morning, there is one for an opinion essay, an introduction for an opinion essay. It says, computers are being used more and more in education. Computers are being used more and more in education. Some say there will soon be no role for the classroom teacher. Some say there will soon be no role for the classroom teacher. To what extent do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? I'm going to ask us to put on our mic so we can all one after the other. Welcome, Marcel. I've been looking forward to seeing you. You came in a bit late. I hope you are okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So everyone put on your mic, please. Just make sure your background is fine. Your background is noiseless so you can interact. Okay. Um, Hannah, can you please put on your mic? Biodu, Ogechi, let's have our mics. Yeah. Um, one is beginning from Hannah. You are going to give me. You are going to give me a key word in that sentence. So Hannah is Ogechi, then Michelle, Mary, and Tolu. You give me a mark, a um, um, what's it called again? You give me a keyword for this one keyword is so. Let's go, Hannah. What keyword have we got in this question prompt? Computer. What can we replace computer with, please? An electronic device. One. Okay. Social media. Social media. Okay. Someone else, please. Okay, Chief. What can we replace computers or something else with? Yeah. Thank you. Mary, do you have any keyword in that in that um, paragraph, that whole sentence that we have there? You, can you recognize any keyword? No, ma. You don't know any keyword there. All right. Does uh, the key, anyone the key. know? Okay. Education. Education. Yeah. What can we replace it with, please? Studies. All right. What else? Can anyone tell us anything else? Learning. Perfect. Learning. Anything else? All right. So, having known, you can put your mics up now. Thank you. Having having known that you need to underline your keywords, you need to know what your keywords are, and um, you will now go ahead to write me an introduction. I need you to understand that question prompt. What the question prompt is saying is that computers are being used more and more in education. Some say that there will be no role for the classroom tutors or teacher in the future. There will be no role. Remember that at the beginning of the class, I had told us that you need vocabulary now as it is we have education here where you need vocabulary for. Anything that has to do with learning can be online tutorials, like you're doing now, we're using computers more, okay? Um, internet learning, all right? Learning on social media and all of that is on the increase. Visual learning is on the increase. More digital learning 
is on the increase as well. So if you can understand that question prompt, get on your part, write an introduction for me, which I type in type to everyone, and um, paraphrase it and tell me your stand. The task for you is to tell me the extent to which you agree or disagree, all right? To what extent do you agree or disagree? If you think that computer is taking over learning, if you think that more people are learning online, if you think that internet studying is on the increase, all right, you think so. And then you also agree, all right, or you assume that in the future, the classroom teacher will not be needed the classroom teacher will have no function. There will be no more jobs for the teachers in the future. If that's what you think, you need to tell me the extent of your thought or of your agreement, of your view, of your opinion. That's what I want in your introduction. So write an introduction for me. The question says computers. I'm going to type it so everyone can see. It. Computers are being used more and more. All right, so it's done. It's done. Let me have your introduction, please. It's something I expected one minute for. It's, an, it's just an introduction, isn't it? And I've explained it already. Just one person. Are we still writing or we're not writing? So we can proceed, please. 
I just want a feedback because really there's no need just reading and I mean explaining things without um, knowing if they understand or not. There's really no need. That's that's me. And that's one of the rules of teaching. If you teach and keep talking and talking and there's no feedback from your students, it, it shows two things. Either they don't understand you or they don't have an interest in it. If you don't understand, we can re-explain so you can understand. And if you don't have an interest in this, there's no need for you to be on this, in this class in the first place. So yeah, if you're not interested, it's better not to be here. Um, and if you are interested and you don't understand, there's no shame in it. It's better to come out and let's know so we can move all together. That's the purpose of the class. Because we can't have um, enough time to answer all of your private um, chats or messages, especially because we are working. We're just trying to see how we can help you so you can like cross, cross over like we have done. So yeah, if you don't understand, ask. If you do understand, then do the task, all right? Um, my own opinion is that classroom lectures cannot be totally eliminated, but it's a technology that teachers needs to, teachers needs to in, inculcate in delivering lectures. So I fairly agree. All right, thank you for attempting it there. Um, electronic devices are now becoming more in the learning process. There's making there be getting teachers to be of less importance in their society. I agree on this point. Technology are being used increasingly in the learning. Some opine that there won't be any need for classroom tutors. I am strongly of the opinion that computers are largely used in educational studies. All right. I would say I got your point, but you need to improve on your introduction. You need to improve on your grammar, really. Um, the last person and the second person and on your spelling as well on the first person. So, yeah, um, if you ask me, I would say that was a good try. OK, that was really a good try because it's, it's unexpected, isn't it? So, yeah, you need to pick your keywords. You need to rephrase it by getting synonyms. Synonyms are words that can replace your keywords for you without changing the meaning. Without changing the meaning. If the question says computers are being used more and more in education, some think there will be no rule for the classroom teacher in the future. If, for instance, I say there has been an increase in online learning, some people assume or believe that the role of the tutors or the job of the tutor will soon face out or there will be no jobs for the tutors in the future. There will be no role. You can replace role with a job, all right? Or you can replace it with employment so that the teachers or the tutors are going to lose employment. They will become jobless. You can replace your teachers with tutors, with educators, instructors. So yeah, and then um, there's a way and a how to answer this question, like I've asked you, to what extent do you agree or disagree? You can either strongly agree or strongly disagree, or you can somewhat agree or somewhat disagree. When they ask you to what extent, it means they want to know your extent. So it has to be either strongly or somewhat. When they ask you, do you agree or disagree? That's when you can say you're of the opinion that, or you agree that. But when there's an extent, they need to, there's, there's a qualifying word, there's a qualifying verb already. There's something that needs to show emphasis on your level of agreement or disagreement. Is it strong or is it somewhat? You need to take into um, cognizance all of those points okay so i said your introduction in the structure of your writing task two 
is your general statement and your specific statement. We have tried to do an introduction for opinion essay. Now there's an introduction for a both sides and opinion. Okay? It's an introduction for a both sides and opinion. Similar question. Sorry, Mike, can't hear you. You can't hear me. What happened? Is everybody having that problem? Who else cannot hear me? If you can hear me, wave. Thank you. You can hear me. Can you hear me now? Mary, any problem? No, ma, no, ma. It was a mistake. Okay, no problem. Yes, right. ma. So, um, I was saying that I'm going. We are going to do a similar question. Oh, more are coming. There has been an ongoing debate on the use of electronic devices for visual learning. It is thought by some that in recent times, the responsibility of the educators will be replaced with these devices. I agree with this stance. You see, your introduction seems quite good from the beginning, but your educators, the spelling of your educators, there's no apostrophe, please. And then your opinion is not well stated. You need to tell me whether you strongly agree or strongly disagree, like I try to explain. Thank you very much for popping that in. Um, so we are going to do the one for both sides and opinion now. Both sides and opinion, similar question, but well, introduction for both sides and opinion. It says, the question says, computers are being used more and more in education. Some people say that this is a positive trend while others argue that it is leading to negative consequences. Some people think that this is a positive trend, while others argue that it is leading to negative consequences. For this question, the first part for opinion essay is the same. The first part is the same. So you are going to tell me your stand at the end. The question says, discuss both sides of this argument and then give your own opinion. Discuss both sides of the argument and give your own opinion. You need to rephrase this. You need to paraphrase this. You need to give me an introduction. So how are we going to do it? Your specific statement plus your general statement. All right. There has been an increase in the use of electric, electronic devices for studying. Some individuals say that this is a welcome idea or some individuals think that it has positive impact or it is a good development. I'm giving you synonyms, your phrasal synonyms that you can use. While others assume that it leads to negative consequences. What are, what's another word for consequences? What can we use? What are the um, synonyms that we can use for consequences? Can anyone tell me? Results, adverse effects, yeah? Can we get more for consequences? Repercussion. Repercussions. Of course, repercussions. And there may be repercussions leading to negative consequences. So negative consequences already is repercussion. All right. What else can we use for negative consequences? Does anyone know? Does anyone know what else you can use for negative consequences? All right, so um, if we don't know, we can use repercussion, we can use disadvantages as well. All right, now the question is asking you to discuss both sides of this argument and then give your own opinion. Like I tried to explain earlier on, how what are we going to do in this introduction? 
paraphrase it, okay, and tell me what your task is. Tell me what your task is. I have paraphrased it. Can we do another exercise in the next three minutes? Give me an introduction for this. Can you give me an introduction? There has been an increase. There has been an increase in the use of online learning, online training, digital learning, or distance learning. All right? The use of electronic devices for studying. Some people say that this is a positive trend, while others argue that it is leading to negative consequences. Discuss both views, both sides of the argument, and then give your own opinion. Discuss both sides of the argument and give your own opinion. On top of your introduction, what you're writing now, it would be good if you write for me both sides an example or example for both sides. Example for both sides so we don't mix it up because we get to go over this and review it sometime. Example for both sides. Yeah? We've got two minutes more. Is it coming? The question, I said that computers are being used more and more. It says computers are being used more and more in education. Some people say that this is a positive trend, while others, are, others argue that it is leading to negative consequences. Discuss both sides of this argument and then give your opinion. No one is popping up yet. Are we still doing that or you can just move on? Can you please put your video on, please? Okay. Thank you. You said there have been an increase in the use of electronic device for learning. Although computer is thought by some to be a useful experience on learning, other people consider that it can be detrimental. This essay will explain what. 
What are you going to explain? Tell me. What are you going to explain? You need to be clear on that, okay? Thank you very much for attempting. So for your both sides and opinion essay, you are expected to say or paraphrase it in your introduction and to tell me what your task is as well. There has been an increase in the use of technology for studying. Many individuals say that it is a welcome idea or it has more advantages, while others think that it has negative consequences we say it has um detriments or it is detrimental rather or it is detrimental this essay will discuss both sides of the argument or both views this essay will discuss both views and state my stand this essay will discuss both sides of the argument that's what they have said. So I don't want to use their words to avoid repetition. This essay will discuss both sides, both views, and give my stand. Do we understand? We understand, yeah? Like I said in your opinion essay, you need to tell me what extent, if you are asked what extent in this essay as well you need to tell me what your task is in your introduction to give me a direction of what i should be looking out for if for instance you have been asked this question and you have to discover both sides in my grading in my grading or in my rating for you i'm going to be looking for the side that says it is positive and the side that says it is detrimental all right, and I'm going to be looking out for your own side at the end of the day. Three things is what I'm going to be looking out for. So, because what you are telling me in your introduction, you are introducing me to this essay that you have written. You are telling me, hey, examiner, this is what you should be looking out for. This is what you should mark me on. Okay, so if you write anything outside this that you have told me, I'll mark you wrong. And some examiners, when you have given them this leading, what they do is to read your introduction and your conclusion. Why? Because in your conclusion, it's going to carry a summary of your points in your first and second body paragraph, okay, and your opinion. And this is what you told her you're going to do. You told him or her that you're going to be saying both sides. So she is going to your conclusion to see what you have summarized as per your points in first and second body paragraphs to ensure that you have done the both sides like you had promised to and that you have also given your opinion at the end of your writing. In, it's similar also to what you do in a two question essay. In a two question essay where you are asked problem and solution or something. I'm going to use a, a different um, example now, no longer on computers, all right? Um, we are going to be having this question like this. Alcohol abuse is becoming more and more common in many countries. Alcohol abuse is becoming more and more common in many countries. What are some of the problems it causes and what are the possible solutions? what are some of the problems it causes. Some people will call this type of essay problem and solution type of essay. It comes under two question essay. We have more questions under it than problem and solution. We've got questions like um, cost and effect as well, not just cost and solution. You've got questions like um, um, cost and um, solution like this one, then cost and effect or cost and consequences. All right, cost and consequences. You know that effect is different from consequences a bit. We, we will explain that if there's need to do that. So um, this question, this type is asking you to tell me 
what the causes are, causes of alcoholism, or the reason why alcohol is on the increase, all right, and to tell me your solutions. So for your introduction, you are going to paraphrase this question type for me. You are going to paraphrase my, my general statement, and then you give me your specific statement. The general statement is what the examiner is asking you. Why your specific statement is your work, your task. I keep saying it. It's what you're going to be doing in the course of this writing. So when you say that in your introduction, it gives me an idea of what to look for in the whole of this, your essay. Alcohol abuse is becoming more and more common in many countries. What are some of the problems it causes and what are the possible solutions? Alcoholism is on the increase in many nations. All right, or it has been noted that there is an increase in the consumption of alcohol in many countries or in many nations or in many communities. This essay will be discussing the problems or disadvantages or the consequences, the negative consequences of alcoholism and will profile possible solutions, all right? Will profile possible solutions to these problems. Do you understand? It does not mean, in as much as we are saying that you identify keywords and change them, give synonyms and paraphrase them, it does not mean that if the words you want to use are not here, that you can't use them. You can use them. That's why from the introduction to writing tax too, I have told us that you are expected to present your writing in your own words. Present them in sentences, making up paragraphs in your own words. Understand this question. You need logical thinking. Understand this question and tell me what the question is saying without you changing the meaning of the question. Whatever word, whatever phrase, whatever sentence, whatever paragraph you can come up with at the end of the day that will tell me that there's an increase in the consumption of alcohol in many countries across the world and that you are going to be telling me the causes of increase in alcoholism and tell me what the solutions are. Okay, whatever word you are going to use, it does not matter. As long as you are able to communicate, as long as I'm able to understand you, as long as you don't change the meaning, that's it. Don't be too rigid with words and say, eh, they say we should um, paraphrase now. I have to, okay, alcohol abuse, what other word? Uh, increase, what other word? Um, country, what other word? Uh, it's good. For your keywords but it does not mean that you limit yourself to the words or to paraphrasing only with the synonyms of words that are there in that sentence or in that paragraph you should broaden your knowledge based on your understanding of this question you need to understand the question and answer it in your own english Putting it down for me in correct sentences, making up paragraphs, error free. Use your lexical resource. Remember, I told us vocabularies, your therefore, your whatever, your moreover, all of the, you know, in addition and all of that should come in to link your sentences together just for you to tell me everything I need to know about alcoholism, about the fact that alcoholism is on the increase, about the fact that this can cause problems, all right, and there are solutions. Here, you don't need any opinion. There's nothing like your opinion, whether coming at the end or coming at the beginning. No. The difference between the introductions for opinion essay, both sides and opinion and two-way essay, is this. For opinion essay, you need to tell me your stand at the beginning, in your introduction, and in your conclusion. 
for your both sides and opinion, you don't need to tell me, keep your opinion out of the body paragraphs. You don't need to tell me what your opinion is from the introduction. I don't need it yet. You only tell me your own opinion after you have given me the options, both sides. You have discussed the negatives and the positives. You have discussed the advantages and the disadvantages. Then in your introduction, you can tell me your own opinion. All right? Where I say, for instance, child spacing is on the increase in the society. Some people think that it has negative impact on the growth or on the population, while others think that it is a positive trend. Discuss both sides and give your opinion. For your both sides, for your introduction, let's start with, you will tell me why and you tell me that some people are of the opinion that family planning should be encouraged, while others think that it should be stopped or it should be discouraged because it has negative impact on the population of a country. This essay will discuss both views and give my opinion. In your first body paragraph, you're going to tell me everything about the negative impacts of family planning or child spacing. What does it do? It reduces population. Okay, it has some health um, detriments. All right. And what else does it do? Maybe the, um, um, uh, apart from the population, what about the impact on the society with the fact that and a lot of people, people are dying and they are not being replaced and jobs are, people are losing jobs or um, jobs are left undone or there are no people to take over um, things from the older generation if you restrict the birth of children. Okay, you tell me all of that in your first body paragraph. How do you give me three, four, two points in one paragraph without making mistakes? You use words like in addition, like furthermore, because you're still explaining the same point. All right. Then you go to your second body paragraph and you tell me about the positive trend. What does it do? What is the use of family planning to the society, to the immediate family? Of what use is family planning? It helps them to plan the family in such a way that they can have the number of children that they can cater for. That way, people are taken off the streets like beggars and all of that because they've got all of their provisions from their family, okay? And it helps us, the, the women's health as well is positively impact, uh, in, impacted in the fact that the, she gets to recover from deliveries of other children before the next one. That's one of the advantages. So if those are your just two points or you have other points and you add to them, you join these points together using those connective words, those cohesive devices and full stop for second body paragraph. It is in your third body paragraph, I mean, in your final paragraph, which is your final statement, which can also be known as your conclusion, that you say in conclusion, family planning helps with this and this and this and this and this. However, it reduces population, it does what and what. You have said the advantage and the disadvantage. You have summarized the same exact points that you had in your first and second body paragraph. Therefore, because of this, therefore, I am of the opinion that family planning should be encouraged or should be discouraged. So you take your side and you let me know what your side is as your final sentence. Your opinion comes in only in your conclusion for your opinion and both sides essay. Your opinion comes in only in your conclusion. Keep your opinion away from the body paragraphs. Okay? Then, for the two-question essay, what do we do? Then, nobody is asking you what you think. 
They're asking you a cause and effect. They're asking you an advantage and a disadvantage. They're asking you a problem and solution. For example, alcoholism is on the increase. What do you think that alcoholism causes? What do you think that alcoholism can cause? Because some people mix up. I gave someone this exact question and she mixed it up. Alcoholism or alcohol abuse is becoming more and more common in many nations. What are some of the problems it causes? It is the problem that alcoholism causes, not the things that cause people to go into alcoholism. She mixed it up. You need to understand the question. That's your number one step to getting it right. If you don't understand the question, then you can't answer it correctly. It's just like the nursing process that we do. When you are given a, a, a question, for instance, they have told you that a, pre, a patient had presented into the clinical um, uh, unit with a temperature of 38.9, um, respiration of 30 seconds per minute, um, the saturation, the oxygen saturation, SpO2 is 92% on room air, and um, um, this quest, a patient is, um, the chest is not clinically clear, and all of the details and all of the details. And they give you, they say, what is the nursing diagnosis? If you miss the nursing diagnosis of this patient, your outcome, your management, your intervention, everything is going to be wrong. So if you miss this question, whatever point you give me, whatever explanation you give at the end makes no sense because you missed it from the beginning. In as much as IELTS is not negative marking, it's something that is very delicate. So we need to have intricate understanding of what the question is saying, a deep understanding of what the question is saying so we can answer and be in line. If not, you will lose marks for your coherence, you will lose marks for your task completion because you have not even done the task at all. Do we understand? If you do another task that you have not been asked, you get what you will, you're, you're, not, you're not expected or you're not supposed to get. That's how it is. So what are we going to be doing here, like I've been explaining, is that you will go ahead to tell me in your first body paragraph what are the problems that alcoholism can cause, okay? There are two different questions. If I ask you, what is the cause of alcoholism? I may not put up alcoholism. I may say, what is the cause and what are the possible solutions? It means that what do you think is making alcoholism to be increasing? If I ask you that one. But now I'm asking you, what are some of the problems that it causes? This is what is the problem that alcoholism causes. So what are the problems it causes? Domestic violence, the man is drunk, and then he comes home beating his wife, or he comes home fighting his family members, his father, his mother, all right? What about deterioration in mental health? What about the fact that alcoholism predisposes an individual to health issues like um, liver cirrhosis, like kidney failures? So these are the things that you're going to be listing for me and explaining to me in your first body paragraph, okay? In your second body paragraph, what is going to be your solution? What is going to be your solution? You give me solution for the problems you have listed. So for alcoholism, what do you think that can be done to reduce the problems with alcoholism. Another problem with alcoholism is the fact that when they drink and they drive, there can be accidents, road traffic accidents, there can be an increase in road traffic accidents and deaths can result. So what happens? 
as per my solution, for instance, I can say that the government can set up rules and regulations that alcohol should be sold to only legible people from above 18 or 25 in some other countries. That way, they can restrict it to only mature people. And they can also put laws and legislations in place to prosecute people that drive after they are drunk. All right? And monitor it as well to ensure that people don't drive when they are drunk or they don't drink and drive. What about domestic violence? If alcoholism causes people to be violent in the home, what happens? How can we solve that? The family member should be encouraged not to mention or to make trouble or to even say things that triggers, you know, their reactions at the point when they are drunk. They need to learn to leave them alone. Okay, so these are the things that are going to come as your second body paragraph. Then in your conclusion, what will you tell me? You are going to summarize both your second and your third body paragraph for me. Conclusively or in conclusion, alcoholism is associated with domestic violence, road traffic accidents when people drink and drive, and what health issues like liver cirrhosis all right therefore it is advisable that the government should set up rules and regulations to guide the purchase of alcoholic drinks comma or in addition or furthermore comma but guide the purchase of alcoholic drinks i'll put comma to put rules in place to punish offenders people that drink and, and drive, and, you know, families should be encouraged to avoid having fights or triggering violence in their family members when they are drunk, full stop. If I see these kind of answers in your writing task, I happen to be your examiner, you are getting your marks. You're getting your marks. There's no need rigmaroling, going here and there. There's no need really. There's no need. Okay? Do we understand this class so far? Has anyone benefited or learned a new thing or a new way today? So far? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. um, we have been able to say that your writing task two, you need a minimum of 250 words, and from me to you, a maximum of 290. In fact, 270 is good, 290 maximum, because the more you write, the more errors you produce. And the more errors you have, the less your marks. Go in with an open mind. Understand what the question is saying. I have explained the question types. Where we have um, opinion on both sides essay, opinion essays or, um, and then um, two question essay. We have been able to explain the structure of the IELTS reading tax too, where we talked about um, the introduction, the first body paragraph, the second body paragraph and your conclusion. Okay? Your introduction, first body paragraph, second body paragraph, and conclusion. You are expected to have four paragraphs in all for your writing task, too. And I have also explained what to expect in these different paragraphs for each of the question types. In your introduction for opinion essays, we have said that you need to rephrase, paraphrase, give me the general statement, and then give me your specific statement. Your specific statement is the task that you have been given. Add that to agree or disagree. Add that to what extent do you agree or to what extent do you disagree. Or whether you think that the advantages are more than the disadvantages or that the merits outweighs the demerits. Both sides and opinion essay 
for its own introduction, I have told us that you give me your general statement and your specific statement, and you try to keep away your opinion from your introduction, you will go further to give me one side of the view in your first body paragraph, the second side of the view in your second body paragraph, and a summary of all your points, both the first side and the second side, and your opinion in your introduction. For your two-way question, I have said that your introduction is your problem statement and your task, what you have been asked to do. Then, one side in your first body paragraph and the other side in your second body paragraph. And your conclusion will be a summary of your points in first and second body paragraphs. For your opinion essays, I'm going to say something new. I, I don't think I've said that in this class. For your opinion essays, in your first body paragraph, you will give me three, two to three to four points if you can summarize them in your first body paragraph. In your second body paragraph, you need to give me a concession. All right. You need to raise a point against your own point. It's just like a debate. And I come in and then um, I've been asked to um, talk about the male child preference over the females, that males are better than females. And I am talking on females are better than males or more important than males. And then um, I have said that the girl child is the one that looks after their parents when they are old. The boy child tends to be married and then, um, you know, whatever happens, it is now determined by his wife, who in turn can bring in her own parents, but may not likely have the parents of the boys to stay with them. Who in turn can make her husband to send money and stuff to her own family, but may not do that with the boy's family, depending on the relationship that she's had with them. But the female child is the one that always looks back home. The female child is the mother, and we know that mothers have a caring heart. So the female child tends to be more family oriented than the male child. The female child is a major role player in terms of reproduction. Okay, she carries the child in her womb for nine months. She goes through the pain of labor. All right, the female child, if given the equal opportunity, same as the male, can also become engineer, doctor, whatever, same for the male child, if they are placed on a, I mean, the same platform. I know that if I say the point about um, the female child carrying the pregnancy, my opponent, who says male is better, will say the male is responsible for impregnating the female. So what am I going to do? I'm going to raise a concession against my own point and say that although the male child is also a major player in reproduction in the sense that the male spermatozoa is required or needed for the fertilization of the female egg, but the female is the vacuum where the baby fills in to stay in her for nine months before delivery. And she goes through the pain of labor. She goes through the pain of waking up at midnight to take care of the child. If that's what I'm saying, if I'm supporting the males, I mean the females, I will raise a point, a point that is for the male, a very strong point for the male. I'll raise it against my own point, but I will give my counterpoint just to make my point known, just to make, you know, you know that, yeah, I do understand this on both sides, okay? I do understand the, the fact that the male is required, I mean, is needed, the woman is important and all of that, but I am going with the female. I do know that the male is needed. I do know 
that the male does whatever with production and all of that but i am still of the opinion that the female is more important so you will use although but however in that case all right so your second body paragraph you need to raise a concession if you're writing an opinion essay you need to raise a concession against your strong point against your strongest point if possible just to clarify and to tell me that yeah yeah i understand the point okay then in your conclusion you can now bring both points together and start with in conclusion despite the fact that the male is required for reproduction I am of the opinion that the female is more important because she carries the baby. She is able to look after her family, even in old age. And your third point, you put it together and full stop. And that's it. Your final statement, your conclusion, tells me a summary of all that you have said in paragraph one two and three it gives me a heading it helps me to know that of in, of a truth what you told me you were going to do in your introduction you have done it some examiners will read your first paragraph which is your introduction and go to your conclusion just to look for your point there do we understand does it make sense to anybody? Yeah. It makes no. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have any question? If you have a question, just wave and I'll let you talk. If you have a question, just wave and I'll let you speak, please. No question. Okay, um, I do. You can unmute now and ask your question, please. Okay. Good morning, madam. You were supposed to put on your video. That's one of the criteria for being in this class, please. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'm uh, very late to join the class. This is my first time anyway. So that's why I don't really know the most of the criteria. It was a friend that sent the the link to me. So uh, <clears throat> I didn't hesitate to join. So sorry, I would like to know because if I start to be asking questions, definitely because I, I I can see that it was maybe it's the time meeting is scheduled maybe nine to eleven or nine something to like eleven. That. Yeah. Uh, I know it's seven, the, the time is fast spent. So I would like to know when the next class is holding, man. Because if I start, if I should start asking the question maybe about the writing, about the uh, this thing, blah 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 like that. Definitely, just like. I'm Are you on just... our Telegram group, sir? No, ma. You need to join the Telegram group. Ah, we. I would like join the the, the the Telegram. There's group. a link. The friend that sent you this link. There's a link that leads you to the Telegram group where you oh. will register before you can join the Zoom classes. Okay. Normally, people from the Telegram group are the ones that will join the link. You follow the oh. link and come to the Zoom classes. So you need oh. to join the Telegram group over see nurses, all right? And then you can have information on our subsequent classes. At the moment, okay. I work as a nurse. Um, okay, man. I... I used to be in Nigeria. I've worked okay. with the federal government. I was in Abuja for some years. And okay. um, I started my processes. And by God's grace, all my exams, I wrote them once. I wrote the IELTS once. Wow. I wrote IELTS when it was UKVI, not the academic now that people think it's easier than the UKVI. And I was lucky, or I was favored, and I was able to pass the exams. And after wow. I came to the UK, I discovered that we have lots and lots of issues with Nigerian nurses, especially with African nurses in general, coming okay. over to this place. And one of the problems, the major, major step is the IELTS. So I decided to help. 
and I joined the platform to help. So if you go to the Telegram group, okay, ma'am, you will find our links, and you will get all of the information that you need. My okay. next class is going to be on Tuesday. Um, I will be on a night shift. I was on a night shift today. I just came back, changed from uniform. I've not okay. had to depart. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I had to do this class. So yeah. Okay. Um, after that, I will come. I will be on night shift on Tuesday, but the class will still hold on that Tuesday. I think it's from four to six or from. I think you will get the exact time, but there's a okay. class on Tuesday. Okay, man. Another thing, I had issues from the beginning. Same thing happened last time. I don't know what's happening. That um, when I'm supposed to go live on the YouTube, I've got a bit of issues with it. If not, this lesson will be streaming live on YouTube as well, and it will okay. be on YouTube, so you can go back, okay, and have a look and go through what has been happening. And then, if okay. you have questions, you can keep your questions for the next class. Okay. Right? Okay, yeah. madam. If you're on the Telegram group as well, you know that there's a, a mail, there's a Gmail address where you can send okay. in your questions, you send in your work. We used okay. to give out assignments and you oh, send wow. in, but it's not all the time because, I mean, okay. we've got families, we've got work to do and all yes. of that. So you may not get all of the vetting as that when you want to get them. So we encourage okay. that you join the classes, ask your questions, participate in the classes. And if there are any issues, we can pick it up from there. Okay. So Thank hopefully, you. the last time it was quite difficult for us to, you know, put the reading class on the YouTube. But I don't know how we are going to do it. But eventually we may have it by Monday on the YouTube channel. Latest, it okay. should be on by Monday. This same class will be on okay. on YouTube so you can go and have a look. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, so, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You can mute now. Be audible, okay. please. Okay. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Thank you so much for the lectures. I really appreciate it. I was having a bit um, of network issues. When I came back online, I discovered that you were talking about the family, um, was it the family planning? No. Yeah. Okay. And I think the um, essay is discuss both sides and give your opinion. And you stated yeah. that when um, we discuss a particular view on the first paragraph yeah. and another view on the second paragraph, that our opinion should be discussed on the conclusion right yep. yes so when i came in after the net when i had the network issues i think you were saying something about when writing um giving a discussing about um a particular um, view on one paragraph you have to state your opinion too i don't really understand you, you so I'm trying that, to, that was a different type of essay entirely all right okay that was a different type of essay sorry um there are three types of essay by virtue of this um grouping that we have done so far and um i used to link list them up to 10 11 before until um i came across these materials and after all of my trainings with the cambridge and i discovered that they all fall under three types of essay okay what you met was the opinion essay the second time oh, in your okay. opinion essays where you have agree or disagree, you are expected to tell me what your opinion is from the beginning. You are expected to tell me whether you agree or disagree, or whether you somewhat agree or somewhat disagree, or whether you strongly agree or strongly disagree when you are asked the extent. When you are asked whether you agree or disagree, you need to say, I agree or disagree or whatever. When you are asked what, what extent, to what extent do you agree or disagree, you need to tell me whether it is strongly or somewhat. All right? Okay. So from your introduction, you need to state that. And then in your conclusion, for opinion essay, in your conclusion, you need to tell me a summary of the points and the, you need to state that why that is why you agree 
I had explained that in your first body paragraph one opinion essay, you need to give me all your points that support you agreeing or disagreeing. Then in your second body paragraph, you need to tell me, give me a concession, raise a concession against your own strong point. So you can raise a counterpoint against it as well. A point that your opponent on the other side, who is agreeing or disagreeing, not like you, will raise and it will make your marks to fall. For instance, if it was a debate, if it was a physical debate and um, your opponent will raise a very strong point against your strong point. So you need to raise that point for me. It's called a, a, a concession where you raise a point against your own point from the other side. So that way, you tell me, your examiner, that you do understand what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. All right? Yes, ma'am. So I have said that computers are being used more and more and all of that. And um, you're of, of the opinion that computers should be encouraged. The use of computers should be encouraged in education. You are telling me that people should go more, to go for online learning rather than physical teaching. Okay, what are your strong points if you have of the opinion that they should go for it? Number one, for instance, maybe you say that it covers a broad um, whatever distance. For instance, I'm in the UK and you're learning in Nigeria. If it was not for computer, I can't, you know, fly to Nigeria to teach you and you won't fly to the UK to receive lectures. So it bridged the gap of distance in terms of learning. Number two, what else does it do as, um, as an advantage? You can study in your, at your own convenience, isn't it? It saves yes, you the money for transportation, for hostel rentage, and for all of that. It saves you that. But what are the disadvantages? Not everybody can afford to get a computer. Not everybody can afford to buy an Android phone. So they lose out. Secondly, the issue of network bandwidth, most of the times. In rural areas, people don't have access to signals, so they lose out if we all have to go on the computers. Am I correct? Plus yes, the right. fact that in areas where there's epileptic power supply like Nigeria, where you live for mm -hmm. now, it's difficult to keep these devices powered. At the end of the day, you can't learn with the computers. You can't learn with this technology. So the aim of it is defeated for you or for them. And it's more expensive. It requires training. People need to be trained and retrained because new trends are coming up every day. So if that is the point that you're going to choose, then you need to give me a point that I will use against you with the fact that um, you are conscious or you understand that um, the point that I will raise will be against you. So you need to raise that point for yourself. You need to raise that point for yourself. For okay. instance, you can just come up and say, although teachers teach with experience, with compassion, and they tend to correct the student there and then, but the computers are also updated in between, okay? And it's convenient. And you can study at your own timing. So in your conclusion for that, you will tell me that despite the fact that physical teachers or tutors, classroom educators are important in the sense that they teach with experience, the computers makes it more convenient for you to study at your own time. It helps you to cover the distance, all right, where you can study from afar. Okay, and it yes, gives you up to date information. Look, I, I, I am a child of a teacher. I'm just giving you an instance. My father used to be a teacher, and my mom used to be a teacher. So, um, I, I grew up hearing people, I lost my dad very early in life, but I heard people wow. say that my father goes to the classroom to teach without book. He doesn't go with lesson plan. He doesn't carry any paper. And I was seeing him like a genius until I grew up and I discovered, no, he's not really a genius. He was just used to the fact that this is one thing he's been doing over the years. So he's stuck in his brain and he can say it without blinking. My father was doing it without being up to date. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. He didn't go for another training. 
for that particular lesson that he was teaching. He stuck with what he knew in, in 1981 and taught it in 82, taught it in 83, taught in 84. The same class. class. So these children, if there has been an update in that particular subject, are not going to get the update, are they? Because they are getting the old lesson. And then for his own advantage, he's got it in his brain and he was just doing la cram la pour. He was la pouring pour. it out for them. Yeah. And they were getting it and they were understanding it. But if they take these children away from that village to the town, they won't be able to compete with the children in town because the teachers in town were more up to date than mm -hmm. he that was in the village and teaching at the time. So what am I saying? Teachers need to be retrained to give up-to-date information. But it's easier to update these things and upload them on the computers and you can have access to them. It's more expensive for a teacher to go back to school and retrain, but for the computers, you just need your data. Okay? Yes, so you need to know what the advantages of studying with the computer is and what the advantages of studying with the teacher, the physical teacher, the classroom teacher is. That way, if you are supporting the teachers, you have a point from the computers to counteract your point, like a counterpoint that will boost you. And if you are supporting the computers, you have a point from the teacher's point of view, all right, to counteract that one so you can boost your marks. That's yeah. what I explained in your opinion essay. Okay. But in the both sides and opinion, where I cited the example of the family planning that you heard, I said that in your first paragraph, keep your, which is your introduction, keep your introduction, keep your opinion to yourself. Keep it far away from it. Don't say it. Just tell me that you're going to be stating your opinion at the end. All right? In your okay. second paragraph, tell me everything you know about one side. In your second paragraph, tell me everything you know about the other part. In your conclusion, summarize your first body paragraph and second body paragraph for me and give me your opinion that okay. because of this and this and this and this and this and this i am of the opinion that family planning should be supported or should not be supported or should be encouraged or should not be encouraged you choose your point but ensure that you have strong points to prove to me the side that you are taking all right yes ma and i said that in your both in your two-way question it's almost like the both sides an opinion, but you don't have an opinion in that one. <coughs> you just need to tell me both sides. Pick one in body paragraph one, pick one side, pick the other side in body paragraph two, discuss it, go to your um, conclusion, and tell me a summary of your points in body paragraph one and two. Okay. And you're done with your writing task two. Ensure that you have your right spellings. Correct spellings, punctuations, those things matter a lot. Make sure you use cohesive devices as much as are available to you. If you had come in late into the class, you would have missed out where I said that there are question types. There are question topics as well. I have discussed question types with you now. The question topics that you have range from media to technology and technology and the future to social issues like divorce, like single parenting, like alcohol abuse, drug abuse, mental health issues, okay? We have things on education, on the media itself. So you need to familiarize yourself with synonyms, with vocabularies that you're going to use to express yourself when you are confronted with any of these topics. For instance, for education, you have things like learning, studying, you know, online learning, online studying, when we talk about computer education. For education, you have things like tutors, for teachers, you have things like instructors, you have educators and all of that. So you need to set these things in place. Can you mute yourself, please, so the background noise can be less? So if you get all of these things that you ought to have, got, you are used to it by virtue of your constant practice, it will be easy for you when you find them in your exams. Does that make sense?
Yes, it does. Thank you so much, ma. Okay, that's fine. Any other question? Any other question? No other question. No other question. So today we have done reading tax, I mean writing tax one and two. We will be dealing with writing tax one and we'll move further in our subsequent classes. Thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Joy Agago. I'm a staff nurse in the UK, a staff nurse in Nigeria, a registered midwife in Nigeria as well. And I work with overseas nurses to provide you free IELTS test um, tips so you can pass your test and join us here. We also offer you, I mean, all the guide that you need after you have passed your exams to come to the UK. We recruit nurses for the UK, actually. So we're not just helping you to pass your test. We're also going to help you in all of your journey over to the UK. Thank you for today. Do have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ma. Thank, Thank you. you. All Thank right, you. bye. bye.